Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sino Payments Bank Limited Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajat Gupta from Go India Advisors. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Lizan. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Fino Payments Bank earning call to discuss the Q1 FY23 results. We have on the call with us today Mr. Rishi Gupta, Managing Director and Chief Ex Executive Officer, Mr. Ketan Merchant, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Santan Mitra from the Investor Relations Team. We must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. We now request Mr. Rishi Gupta to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights, subsequent to which we'll open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Rajat. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us today for our earnings call. Fino's business model was conceptualized keeping in mind the problems of a common man who doesn't have easy access to a neighborhood bank, who is unable to bank in normal banking hours and have many other constraints. Our vision was to provide all-inclusive fintech growth to this set of people by making them not only comfortable with the organized banking, but getting them to move on to a digital banking. Over the years, we created relevant products to service such customers. Our products like domestic money transfer, which is a remittance product, micro ATM and APS, which are cash withdrawal products, makes banking easily accessible to the lowest rate of population and offers them differentiated services. These are normal banking products uh, which are there for everybody's use on a daily basis. The growth we saw in this model gave us the confidence that this business model is sustainable and scalable. This is also evident from the strong growth we have seen since the last five years. Our merchant base has grown by 11 times. Our four-year revenue CAGR till FI22 was nearly 40%. And they have been profitable for more than half the time of our bank. While Ketan will discuss the quarterly numbers in detail, I would like I would like uh, to take this opportunity to mention a few highlights uh, for this quarter. We have delivered a very strong revenue growth in quarter one, which is also sequentially higher than quarter four, a seasonally strong quarter for us. This is the first time our quarter one has been higher than quarter four in so many years. Our PAD grew over 3x in this quarter, and this is despite the investments which are ongoing in the digital business. We have achieved an all-time high of uh, throughput of more than 60,000 crores, of which nearly 50,000 plus crores were on non-digital side. This is also the first for us. Our digital imputers continues, and for the quarter one FI23, our digital constitutes nearly 16% of our total throughput. Our strong focus on customer engagement is showing results. Growth in our mature and high margin products is significantly high, as you can see on the CASA side. Our products mix is evolving and moving towards high growth and high margin products like CASA and CMS, which now constitute over 20% of our revenues. Our ability to cross-sell is getting standard substantially so that in Fino 2.0, we can make cross-sell a sustainable part of our growth story. Our focus has always been on profitable growth and being very competitive in our offerings. What we now have is, is a very strong business with large physical presence and diversified income streams. We are future ready and our digital investments are underway and this product will be rolled out in staggered manner over the next two to three quarters. There is a six, still significant headroom for growth in Fino 1.0, which is our core business across products expected to grow at a CAGR of 25% around that level. But what really excites us is our next phase of growth, our digital initiatives, which will form Fino 2.0. This unique combination of physical and digital will elongate our secular growth period. Fino 2.0 is a natural evolution in the customer lifestyle journey and will enable our existing customers to move to the fintech value curve. My aim in long run is to take our customers 
from uh, from around 400 to 500 rupees right now to 1000 rupees through our omni channel presence and that should shall cater to the profitability and rov targets which we have over the medium term period at the same time our digital stack will help us target millennials a new user group which will provide us with more diversified customer base and will enhance our product offerings we believe that we have a strong strategic positioning in fintech space in india on account of three key factors our asset light business model a diversified product offering with good combination of high volumes and a high margin products and having well invested technology stack which gives us a unique edge by making us future ready for our next phase of growth before i hand it over to ketan on detailed update i would like to mention following three key aspects emerging for this quarter from a strategic direction perspective our annuity income which which is basically our casa subscription which brings predictability to our model has increased by 4.8 times on an year on year basis our core product of growth cms has increased more than two times on a year on year basis digital base is being built for for right cross selling in fy 23 24 onwards with this i would like to hand over to ketan for his comments on our financial performance Thank, thank you, Rishi. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've seen our presentation, which has been already uploaded. Over next uh, ten odd minutes, I'll briefly take talk about the performance in this quarter and also give a strategic direction. Yeah, how how this quarter dovetails into into uh, a long term plan which we are doing. To begin with, as Rishi mentioned in his comments, we delivered a strong revenue growth sequentially as well. To resonate it again, what Rishi said. If, if we go to slide number 12 of our investor deck, it actually clearly shows the trend for past couple of years and how this momentum of quarter one stands out to be the best over the over the years. Our Q1 revenue were at 289 crores, a YOI increase of 40%. Our Q1 throughput at uh, 60,784 crores has increased by 47% YOI. Again, this is the first quarter wherein we have had. a uh, non digital throughput in excess of 50000 crores coming to profitability on a yoy basis our ebitda has more than doubled to 24 crores and we delivered a quarterly pat of 10.1 crores a growth of 3x or 3.3x this we believe is a remarkable achievement for a young company like us because we are still in the client acquisition phase and investment phase and monetization is yet to come before i cover each of the business segments briefly i intend to you know throw some light on the operational highlights as rishi mentioned we are we are guiding you up about our digital journey as part of pino 2.0 this is going to be a medium term investment before business starts accruing on on this new channel but when we make this statement what essentially it means you would all agree that customer acquisition rates for fino are on meteoric rise every quarter this is generating healthy subscription and now on annuity income as well but is this subscription income the only potential for the product digital journey as part of fino 2.0 is the answer to this let me attempt to substantiate this to you with some interesting data points emerging from india's digitization story our overall digital throughput has grown in fq1 fy23 by 285% yoy but more interestingly it is the real bharat which is standing out in this journey on this pino 
quantitative basis, we've seen a growth of 67%, though on sequential basis, we've seen a growth of 3%. Yeah. For remittance, it is a critical part, again, as we mentioned it for a micro ATM, it is the first entry point, while it's a low margin product, but it essentially gives us access to the customer base and helps us to convert. We have strong presence in states where remittance are high, like Gujarat, Kerala, and uh, UP and Bihar. Amongst the business momentum continuing, I also want to put following points on the table. Uh, I have spoken about margins. Margins currently, while moderated from earlier quarter, are higher than uh, still over 30%. This is a function of our strategy to take balanced approach on long-term growth and profitability. Our endeavor continues to build a sustainable base for customer acquisition, the point which I have reiterated earlier, and that too on a profitable basis, and use our legacy transaction business to mobilize the acquisition. And thereafter, as Rishi said, you know, put a platform for cross-sell. Our open banking business is growing at a faster pace. However, in the long run, we would keep the balance between open banking and own channel in the ratio of 33 is to 61. Before I close, I would, I would like to give some, some insights in terms of our strategy as our, or, a, or, a, or a midterm outlook. We are attempting to deliver a 20% growth in our transaction stroke matured business. This growth would also bring in operations of scale advantage to counter inflation as, as is being seen specifically in the technology and the digital world. Our AAPS business is showing much stronger growth prospects than anticipated as I had mentioned earlier. CASA CMS would continue to be the growth drivers and thereafter creating more cross-sell and upsell opportunities. The digital throughput is increasing, we are investing and it is a plan for us to you know, have a long-term strategy wherein Fino 2.0 would, would dovetail a cross-sell, upsell, and digital along with the customer acquisition spree, which is currently on. With this, I would like to open the uh, floor for questions for me and Rishi to take. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? May please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Shri Karthik from Investec. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you. I have a couple of questions, one on the balance sheet and then one on the business. Uh, <clears throat> with respect to your balance sheet management, what I was wondering is uh, why, have we, why have we been increasing our borrowings on the balance sheet side? And especially uh, given that this is more a treasury operation in an increasing rate environment, uh, has that led to a material treasury loss for us during the quarter? So those two, uh, those two on the balance sheet front. Uh, a third question on the business. I want to understand the uh, rate for us on the, CASA, um, on the CASA customer base. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Shri Karthik. Uh, Ketan here. Let me, let me just uh, first attempt to address the, uh, the balance sheet point. You are right. If you see on the balance sheet side, our... Uh, uh, Borrowings from 249 crores have gone up to 581 crores. Now again, here it is nothing to do with a long-term strategic borrowing. These are all overnight borrowings which are essentially there. Now, is it uh, your second point? And if we go to the asset side as well, our investment, which was at 631 crore, has gone to 1,102 crores. So there is a whopping growth out there as well. On the point on the losses on the balance sheet, which couple of other financial players are doing, the answer to us is no. Whilst the repo rates and the rates overnight have gone up, our treasury you know, has, has actually generated more profit uh, than this thing. This is based on our position, which we had taken last year, and we continue to. The point to essentially note out here is, unlike, unlike the the traditional banks, we do not have an HFT positions wherein any mark-to-market losses get impacted out here. 
however we are making for the casa balances which are coming and if you are seeing out here as well the deposits have grown from 500 crores to 581 crores a 16% growth coupled by the other uh, uh, emd deposits also which we get we are playing in a manner that our we are net positive for this quarter and and there is a stress testing analysis which is done that e even if the overnight rates go up to 200 basis point or 225 basis points further we are we will continue to have profit only uh sorry that was your on the balance sheet piece uh, I, on the second question uh, you mentioned something on casa but it was not clear can you repeat the question i was asking your one year renewal rate on the casa customers given that you started to report your uh, renewal revenues yeah so our uh, 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 renewal rate for casa you, you're right uh, our renewal has gone by 4.79x in in this thing so we have a renewal rate which is in excess of 50% uh, when 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 the customer is coming across so every year when a customer comes more than 50% of the of the of the guy comes and renews it next year thank you i'm i'm going to come back in the queue again thank you thank you shrikathik thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Rahul Maheshwari from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, Rahul. Uh, uh, um, three questions. First, uh, can you um, see on ROE trajectory? Even if uh, can you go? Sorry, Mr. Professor Maheshwari, your audio is breaking up. Am I audible now? uh yeah, let's try uh, let's try yeah mr mishra please continue i'll i'll get back into i'll thank you the next question is on the line of anuj narula from jm financial please go ahead hello sir thank you for taking my questions So I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, many of the other banks are offering zero balance accounts, which are free as well. So just wanted to understand how do we capture more market share here when we are charging a subscription fee for maintaining a bank account with us? And uh, another question is, uh, what are the key business verticals that we have focused that we feel would constitute for the larger share of revenue mix in the next 2 3 years and how do we plan to go there thank you sir let me answer the first one uh, see uh, uh, in our case uh, uh, while we also offer a zero balance but we are not focusing on that uh, account that much uh, the our ability to get subscription and open uh, more than 2 lakh accounts on a monthly basis consistently is testimony to the fact that there are people who are ready to pay no free uh, free ba zero balance accounts or free accounts have a very low activeness and a very low transaction business and if you see uh, our balances have gone up from uh, by 28% from 800 or to 1100 or on an average basis and a uh, uh, lot of them nearly 33% of them are becoming more digitally active as well so our our belief is uh, that to uh, to get the customer activeness as well as to uh get more balances into the account it's better to uh, price the product and the customer is ready to pay
0.75 this year we are already at 2 uh, 2 lakh plus uh, on a monthly basis and hopefully the numbers will go up if i look at uh, the next couple of years if i add the run rate which is there i think we'll cross uh, a crore number of accounts in the in the next uh, one and a half to two years uh, maybe earlier also if we maintain the same run rate and grow from here as well so the share of our uh, casa accounts and the income percentage uh, will go up uh, considerably if you look at it it is now hovering around 14% it used to be in the single digit low single digit couple of years back so if i look at from a overall revenue perspective uh, our honest business or customer acquiring business will continue to grow having said that because of the fact that we are also expanding our uh, merchant network we are also pushing people to come to our platform because that's the if if i look at that's the that's the hopper we have uh, in that hopper the more the people come a part of that percentage roughly around 2% which ketan mentioned gets converted into into kasa uh, while kasa is there uh, let me also share some numbers in one of our slides we have mentioned that uh, when a person comes to us on an offers transaction we make about 55 to 65 rupees on an average per annum it moves to 370 rupees when we open a subscription uh, shop account for him we have seen in the last one year uh, because of uh, the debit card transactions uh, the the offers transactions onto the platform the balances which is keeping the money which i get on nash and other activities i make roughly about 100 rupees uh, on an account on an average basis so 370 becomes uh, 470 uh, and on that in, in the next one year uh, basis the on an average basis plus i am able to cross sell to him so uh, your question is uh, for us we will continue to push on the offers our share of kasa percentage uh, will continue to grow we are seeing a good momentum in that uh, and we are now also linked to many more states uh, nearly 89% of our customers are primary customers they are seeded with uh, government schemes and other benefits which is also resulting in a higher uh, honest transaction as well as higher renewal uh, accounts so uh, on on a on an overall basis uh, while we are not tracking on us whether it will overtake offers but percentage wise growth wise margin wise and the cross sell uh, benefits which we see and to add the digital overlay over it we are seeing a very positive trend on on the customer requiring uh, business which we have started couple of years back and i think that will continue to be there uh, uh, as the way i look at the market is quite big on that I guess the broader question is that given that facing, uh, you know, there is pricing pressure, and the pricing pressure seems, um, you know, being a function of a competition and b um, uh, of, of of the share of offers going up. Obviously, uh, the owners, um, you know, it's just more margin uh, beneficial from you. But but fair, fair enough. Uh, I think the second question is just what at where maybe you could start sharing some metrics or do you know, um, so you could just tell us what are the number of our own merchants who are doing. Uh, more than one project uh, product and how many are doing maybe three products uh, uh, yeah yeah chandra ketan here uh, we shall we shall you know uh, uh, try and put it across in the from the next presentation sure thank you thank you the next question is on the line of shreya shivani from clsa please go ahead hi thank you for this uh, thank you for the opportunity so i have three questions broadly uh, i think i heard you say that you will want to uh, change the remittance mix between own and api channel to 33 to like 32 something like that 33 to uh, 32 70 uh, ratio now that kind of mix you guys used to have back in fy19 like way back before the covid even started so uh, i mean how would you go about it you uh, this basically means you will be pushing more of your own channel because you can't really stop business coming on the api channel i mean i just want to understand that uh, that part of the business this is first uh, secondly on the casa uh, account opening the clearly the trend has been very strong and many congratulations on that so i just wanted to a uh, couple of quarters back you had mentioned that you will be able to reach 1 crore casa accounts by like say uh, fy24 or something like that do you think you will be able to surpass that now given the run rate that you have already achieved in this year that's my second and the last question really is on the cross sell uh, products i mean if you can uh, apart from uh, us 
uh, knowing that the businesses will uh, be operational in the second half of this year if you can give us a little more color about around uh, which will be the products that will get launched first uh, what kind of op uh, operation uh, successes have you seen in the pilot pilot programs that will be useful those are those are my three questions thank you thanks uh, shreya uh, let me just take your first question first uh, this is uh, open banking versus uh, own yeah you, you're right uh, uh, i'll draw the attention on slide number 24 uh, wherein wherein we have given data of how it was in q1 fy22 and how it is q1 fy23 just a minor point to put across it was not only remittances what i essentially said off is that between on all the products whether it's micro atm aps and uh, and remittances the transaction products uh, taken together our endeavor has been to you know put a ratio of 33 uh, and 67 uh, that's the number which we quoted currently we are off uh, because you're right uh, the open banking essentially has grown faster open banking has grown faster on account of two aspects one is if i do a year on year comparison remittance which is a generally dominant part of open banking there was a recovery growth which was happening you know the covid uh, had impacted phase 1 and phase 2 the only product which had impacted which was dominant in open banking was remittance so there has been a remittance recovery on an overall basis if we see uh, remittance has grown on a year on year basis by 67% and api being the strong partner that is how it is skewed second aspect wherein uh, uh, to give a more strategic outlook in terms of how do we eventually come to our desired matrix between own banking and open banking yes we are you know attempting to have a larger share in terms of the transaction business as as well so we are we not controlling the open banking that will come as it comes but we are definitely the focus essentially is on on the uh, uh, on acquisition of the new distribution points and enhancing business on our own side specifically in in aps you know which uh, for 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 ourselves where the market growth is essentially there however we also have to look at it in a slightly non uh, uh, typical matrix basis as well because the besides the margin being high for uh, own banking it also gives us a very high potential for for the conversion as well so own banking uh, we will grow uh, we are looking at a weighted average kind of a growth in these transaction products of in the range of 20% own banking we are giving more impetus in terms of the distribution network and in in a long run our desired uh, 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 you know uh, ratio between own and uh, this thing continues to be a 67 33 and currently we are a bit off on that so that is your first question uh, let me take the casa yeah. part so on the casa side uh, you are absolutely right looking at the traction uh, which is there currently in our platform on opening account uh, uh, my my i will go with you in terms of that the uh, we should cross more than 1 uh, crore uh, casa account uh, by end of fy24 and on the cross sell part uh, questions uh, i think on the cross sell uh, only international remittances is something which we have uh, started to pilot uh, that to at our branch level uh, we are it is in a learning phase uh, right now for us i uh, you know for an ir business uh, there are a lot of uh, compliance requirements and the regulatory compulsions which have to be uh, completed first so hopefully in the, in in this quarter of fi quarter 2 end or quarter 3 beginning we should see our international remittances
idea is to uh, make all of that available at the merchant so we see a higher traction a higher footfall and uh, ability to have a higher income per account got it and one last question from my side the pilot program for these products before you launch how how what's the time period usually for those pilot programs you run it for 2 to 3 months or something like that roughly 3 3 to 4 months is something which we look at uh, for pro product especially which are on high like ir is a very high compliance uh, product you you understand because of the aml and all the factors which have to be factored in as far as international remittances is concerned we will probably test it for a longer period of time and then launch it but some products which are uh, not that complex uh, like uh, digit insurance which we started on uh, shopkeepers uh, within two months i think we we were able to launch it so it depends upon product to product and the complexities uh, which are there and also the apis which we have with our partners got it got it i'll get back into the queue thank you so much thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Renish Bua from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, good afternoon and congrats on a, a great set of numbers. Uh, so there is just uh, two questions. Uh, one is sort of for clarification. Uh, you know, on the uh, uh, notes to account part, uh, we have mentioned some, uh, you know, uh, the employee benefit uh, under this uh, section of uh, code of security. So, sir, what is that? I mean, and what kind of uh, accounting impact uh, we see on P&L because of this? Hi, Ganesh. Uh, Ketan here. Uh, uh, Ganesh, uh, uh, you know, uh, last year we had issued, uh, from the motivation of the staff perspective, the uh, uh, ESOP implication. You know, ESOP for all the key management staff has been. has been uh, you know given off so the impact uh, that is that is the note which you are referring to uh, the impact of that on an annualized basis to the pnl is is around 6 crores uh, that is based on the calculation you know including the black shoulder method and mm-hmm. and uh, and the rbi regulation which comes through and this has been given to a, a set of employees the key set of employees or the core set of employees in in terms of the uh, 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 driving the function and the organization to the next level got it and sir uh, secondly uh, on on this uh, you know this investment side uh, we did mention about uh, we going to invest uh, behind uh, sort of building this we know uh, 2.0 version uh, so sir what kind of uh, annual investment we are planning and uh, does this will have any impact on let's say our earlier assessed uh, profits for fy 23 24 uh thanks uh, ranish for that question uh if you go back to our uh, primary proceeds uh, you know we have raised somewhere around 300 crores and while it is for augmenting tier 1 capital our thought process around was that uh, there is a, 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 a you know a digital and technology initiative where we want to be ahead of the curve and and where in our target audience before they reach completely out there uh, in in the, in the digital space we want to you know ensure that they have customer trust loyalty and 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 the other aspects so that they continue and also we can have cross sell in regards to your uh, pointed uh, question in terms of how does this essentially impact uh, the profitability uh, i think uh, we have started investing most of this investment would essentially be in the capex uh, nature and so you know we building stacks we building solutions which will be there uh do i want to essentially put a number that how much of this you know through a, via the depreciation line or via the amortization line will come through the answer is no we have started making a plan in terms of how do we you know over over next uh, 18 to you know uh, 18 to 24 months utilize somewhere in the range of around 150 to 180 crores in terms of uh, the technology and digital initiatives the mm-hmm. impact on the this year's pnl is will depend upon how fast these tax are are born for us the the accretion of the the real benefit of digital as i said earlier we have started taking in in the F, in fy 23 and 24 as well so maybe over a period of time it will be however just to conclude on this particular point and it is very important with what rishi started off with in long run it will be a uh, you know uh, the roe target which we have set ourselves in in you know at the time of the uh, public launch and otherwise is what we are looking at it will also be a balanced approach in terms of profitability and growth but we will not shy away from making capital investments in in this field so that you know a 23 24 24 25 onwards we can start getting benefits out of coming to it 
Oh, got it, sir. So uh, again, I mean, just to follow up on this. Uh, so maybe this 150, 180 crore, you know, whatever uh, way we uh, spend, either it will flow through depreciation, you, you know. So in that case, uh, the P&L impact will be a little prolonged. And if we do it via OPEX, it will be uh, front-ended. Yes, it depends upon the nature of this thing which we are doing. But again, since we are, you know, attempting to build a, a robust digital platform. Uh, you know, uh, you, you know the the capex element of this is expected to be in a in the higher proportion. If that is the question which you are looking at. Got it, got it, sir. And just a uh, uh, last thing on the uh, gross margin side. Uh, uh, so we are at thirty percent now. Okay. Uh, now considering all the cross sell, upsell, or maybe you know the benefits uh, which we are going to derive from this uh, uh, digital initiative. Uh, where should uh, one uh, uh, look at it as a steady state uh, margin for our kind of a business? Uh, yeah, uh, that is a that is a very very uh, good one. Um, and uh, uh, Ranish, uh, if you if you recollect the, the last call uh, and, and and the way I started off my this time's uh, transcript as well, we had mentioned that you know when it was around 32 percent, we are looking at you know a 30 percent kind of a thing. I should be very honest out here that you know in this particular quarter I was not expecting that it will go to 30%. I was looking at a you know largely a slightly moderate uh, kind of a, a margin compression which is happening. Having said that, based on the kind of the product mix which has changed, the remittance, the the APS increase in open banking, it is indeed taken us to 30%. Mm. Uh, we are looking at a margin from here on, uh, you know, to be in in, in range bound. This also resonates with earlier question perhaps Shreya asked, how are we going to balance open banking and uh, our own banking, uh, our own channel? So we are putting an additional impetus in terms of our own channel. The CASA and CMS which are growth drivers, maybe I'm repeating this again, at a 57% and a 40% margin will, will also play its part in the weighted average margin. So to, to broadly look at how will margin shape up from here on? Our endeavor is to keep it range bound in the current pair we are. Got it. Got it, sir. And sorry, sir, just uh, last thing on the uh, micro ATM side. Uh, okay, so uh, since this has been our, uh, you know, one of the high margin product, and if I uh, uh, sort of look at it on YOY basis, uh, margins uh, or let's say the uh, revenue uh, is declined by almost 40 50%. And uh, I think that is the uh, a primary reason why uh, you know our pad uh, uh, stands at 10 crore. Uh, let's say it, it should have been higher if we would have maintained uh, the micro ATM share in the overall business. So uh, particularly, uh, I can understand you know this is a hook product for us, uh, wherein you know at a later stage uh, we'll cross sell upsell. Uh, but considering this is one of the high margin product, I mean with, uh, without cross sell upsell we are making 40 50 percent margin. So why can't we sort of focus on scaling up this product and, uh, you know, sort of maintain uh, in the range bound of around, let's say, 15, 20% of the total revenue versus where it is currently 10% and then uh, focus on uh, cross-sell upsell. I mean, just your broad thoughts will be helpful, sir. Uh, Ranish, thanks. Uh, I think uh, you, you are right. Uh, you know, uh, micro ATM over last three quarters has... Uh, not shaping out uh, the way it is. APS, in fact, is shaping out. Now, we are also ourselves in terms of last call also we had mentioned that we are essentially grappling because you are right, uh, micro ATM on a standalone basis gives a, a, a margin of around 45-46% is what we are target segment as well where the micro ATM was at its peak do should we should we you know try and put it more in terms of our urban audience as well where currently it is more of a rural phenomenon our, our, our uh, sales team and our product team are working in terms of the uh, revival of this product I would not say revival revival is a very strong product revival of the 
of the uh, growth anticipated in this more so because aadhar enable payment system is growing so there is some you know the demand for overall cash withdrawal is there as we speak currently uh, do we do we have a very concrete step that how we we change it up we are working on this and and maybe it will require us a, a quarter or two more in terms of to reassess that do we need to completely change one point though i want to mention out here is that we are maintaining the margin out here unlike competition there is intense competition people are at attempting to give devices without any fees etc etc we have not gone completely into that so we are maintaining the margin we are attempting new ways in terms of bundling and and we see over next two quarters how is this uh, you know uh, going to plan out for us including got the new target segment which i just mentioned got it sir this is very very helpful sir thank you so much sir thank you the next question is in the line of harish shah from reliance general insurance please go ahead uh, my questions have been answered thank you thank you sir we'll move on to the next question that is in the line of ashish kumar from infinity alternatives please go ahead uh thanks uh, for taking my question uh, rishi and ketan uh great show on the revenue growth my question was around the gross margins basically and and just uh, following up from the last uh, question uh, from the last speaker uh do we see that the margins will given the fact that uh, that uh, the product mix is changing in a manner where the margins are kind of going down do you see a risk that we may uh, the marg- the gross margin may slip to mid 20s or or or, or go below 30% <sighs> Ashish, uh, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, reframe what I was mentioning to Ranish earlier. That uh, uh, product mix, yes, they have changed. There were a couple of logical reasons which I explained as well. That you know, uh, remittance being a dominant for open banking, that is you know has has grown. Uh, earlier, we did not have a material AEPS uh, happening in open banking. That is growing. but but are you you know if your question is very pointed that are we looking at a you know 20s kind of a margin is that something which is you know what we are looking at the answer essentially is no we are looking at a, a you know margin being range bound from year on and not to forget uh, the the growth drivers which are which we are mean emphasizing it off is that both casa and cms those are high margin products in the range of 57% and even even more in the time of renewal and you know 40% in casa so we are expecting a, a range bound uh, margin which is happening and and eventually as we said our product mix between open banking and uh, uh, own uh, we are looking at a 6733 which i had earlier given guidance as well sure uh the second question was in relation to your investments that you are making uh, because if i look at the below the gross margin line oh. right there is a very little uh uh movement quarter on quarter in terms of the uh, the in the, the 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 below the gross margin line uh, are most of our investments in the form of capex or are we looking at opex kind of a thing and i tell you where i'm coming from the given the fact that given the competitive dynamics we are closer to let's say 30% gross margin uh it would it might mean that our uh, our, our if if we are looking at increasing investments over the next couple of quarters it might mean that we might be looking at uh low teens kind of roe over the over this next two three quarters is that a fair way to look at it uh ashish again a good point uh, 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 as i said uh, and, and you are right uh, our uh, we raised capital maybe around 6 months back we are making our plans and we had also mentioned that this capital will take us through the next uh, 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 you know couple of years and more in terms of our plans so you know our investments on technology and digital are you know are are in the in the conceptualizing or the implementation phase and which will start happening over next couple of quarters and more as regards to your uh, uh, you know point on opex and capex i mentioned it earlier most of these tax which we are making or the platform which we are making you know are 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 to generate a revenue for future you know which will be coming earliest from 23 24 onwards so most of this would end up being being capex having said that uh, we are no different from the 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 rest of the technology industry or uh, 
fintech bank wherein uh, we are also seeing some spurge in terms of the technology inflation which is you know coming to us specifically on the on the on the technology opex cost side as well so primarily on the capex side technology inflation is hitting us but we expecting it to control it off and we also expect you know on a on a gradual basis on a balanced approach between profitability and growth on your question on roe i think uh, you know roe is something which we had mentioned it at the time of uh, 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 the public issue we are looking at anything in the range of um, 20% plus over a long term period or over a, over a mid to long term period and we are working towards that into a balanced approach on profitability and 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 volume growth sure and just to kind of uh, if i can push my luck with the third question uh, on the borrowing and the investments that we have done you mentioned that we are making a positive uh, contribution on that so on that 500 crore book what will what will be the kind of profitability that we will be looking at that piece yeah on the on the uh, uh, on the treasury side currently our uh, income for the quarter was anywhere in the range of around 17 crores uh we are making a good spread and this is what i said despite uh, uh, despite the repricing of the uh, rates which has happened the way our book is also positioned it off is that you know we we, we are having a repricing uh, uh in in this quarter as well so every time there is a rate hike anticipation our our book is in 6 months and 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 or residually 6 months and 9 months tenure and part of it is repriced so overall uh, uh uh we intend to continue our borrowing so i do not want to put a essentially a forward looking number on the on the treasury piece given how the interest rates go but but as i said we have a cushion or the sensitivity analysis of uh, no anywhere in the range of 225 basis points wherein wherein our spread will continue to be super positive and this is even without the repricing with the kind of repricing book which we are looking at even even the sensitivity analysis of uh, the interest rates up will will further uh, increase as well i hope i could uh, give a directional guidance uh, of no 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 I, i think that's very good no i just just trying to understand that uh, if you were to remove the net treasury income from the book then probably our core business probably made a uh, uh, made a marginal profit yeah we have to look at it in two aspects uh, i i i would say that because uh, the the major part of our uh, treasury income is also coming from the deposit growth if you seen that you know on a quarter by quarter basis sequential basis our uh, uh, deposits or the casa deposits have increased by 17% so this is how we are deploying it essentially so whilst we are not a balance sheet focus based for the reasons and the statistics which we explained in terms of how our debit card spends are increasing how our customer balances are increasing it off we are having a benefit and a substantial or a reasonable benefit coming on account of our business growth as well also the point to note out here which does not come on the face of the balance sheet as well in in because of the payment bank uh, uh, designation which we have in addition to this 580 crore of deposit which is shown we also have around 250 odd crores of emd balances you know which are there and which are by the virtue of regulation need to be classified under a separate heading that also is available for us in terms of deployment and both of this is connected to business one is connected to the customer acquisition 80% growth which you've seen the other one is connected to the 58% acquisition on the merchant stock distribution network which we have seen right okay i think that that kind of helps and wish you all the best as you build up you know 2.0 thank you uh, thank ashish thank you the next question is from the line of hitesh randhawa from ravesia asset management please go ahead yeah hi good afternoon gentlemen uh, my first question was around uh, the cyclicality element uh, uh, that uh, i have observed actually in the on the slide 12 of the presentation so maybe could you please elaborate on the cyclicality element uh, uh, another question that i had was around the employee expenses uh, second of there is a 20% increase sequentially so maybe could you please elaborate on that as well as to what contributed to that and are there any non recurring components within this which uh, wouldn't say kind of which would wouldn't be contributing in the upcoming quarters and uh, last question that i have is uh, around the 
uh, I think your press release talks about some kind of a moderation in the onboarding fee. So, kind of, could you please uh, let me know what is the average uh, uh, CASA onboarding and renewal fee right now, and maybe how much has it come by, and uh, maybe uh, what do you expect the trend to be? Thank you. So, on the first pass on the cyclicality, uh, you are right. Uh, first quarter normally has been always uh, low for us because a lot of people actually. Especially our kind of uh, migrant people, they go back to their uh, homes for crop and other uh, purposes. So that is where we see uh, the the cash withdrawal as well as the remittance uh, business normally drops. Uh, this year, uh, while they they still could have been higher uh, in a compared to a normal quarter, but the quarter one still has cyclicality, uh, which we were able to overcome by our expansions, which we did in the last year or so. So. Starting July, August, when uh, people come back, actually they come back from the month of June onwards. So April, May, we have seen relatively low numbers, and then it starts to build up during the year. If you look at our past two, three years of trends, also you will see starting from uh, middle of quarter two till quarter three, quarter four, that has been a major uh, growth uh, months uh, for us. As far as employee expenses, uh, maybe Ketan can answer. Yeah, thanks, Rishi. Uh, uh, on the on the employee expenses, I think a couple, two points to make out here. Maybe a reiteration of what I said earlier to one of the questions is: um, uh, Yes, we have started uh, the the uh, the ESOP scheme. You know, with effect from um, uh, 21 uh, policy which we had done. So there is an impact which is coming essentially out of that. Second, as the two other aspects which we are seeing is also the the kind of growth which we are seeing. We overall have a you know 150 odd people team uh, in-house technology team which is there, and I should actually confess it off that the technology cost or the technology people cost, and here I'm saying technology is also the the high-flying digital guys as well, are are really going are going going off the roof. Okay, so we are essentially having some challenges. Not we, the industry as a whole is also having you know challenges in terms of technology. Our understanding is that you know this kind of a thing may remain, uh, maybe you know, the overall funding in these spaces reducing it off, so some sort of a moderation or some sort of a base bench which which will come through. So, is this is this a normal thing which we are essentially looking at on a year-on-year -year basis? The 20% kind of the growth is and the answer to that is no. We are working on uh, overall inflation-based matrix as well. So we are balancing between, you know, uh, rewarding our our good employees and the profitability as well. So we will, depending upon how the market goes, specifically in technology and digital, uh, we will be, you know, having a moderation coming out there. Sorry, I, there was a third, third question, question as well. Was moderation on onboarding I, in the press release. Uh, I could not figure what what you are referring to. Yeah. So uh, in the press release, basically it is stated that subscription and onboarding revenue have kind of uh, continued to raise a strong momentum of uh, 68% despite uh, uh, moderation in onboarding fees. So my question was, say kind of what is the uh, when you are talking about moderation in onboarding fees, how much has it moderated by? What are the what is the current uh, uh, average onboarding fee and uh, how much has it come down by? No. Uh, okay, uh, let me attempt to put this across what we were trying to, uh, you know, uh, and which is also in the face of our presentation as well, that uh, uh, the kind of impetus which our renewal fee has shown, you know, and I had given some statistics and data of 4.7 uh, times growing on a YOY basis. What we were trying to say out here is, uh, you know, whilst the account opening momentum is excellent, you know, we have opened 6.2 lakhs account this quarter, which we service a 6.7 lakhs account uh, last quarter. However, so so that's where that's where our new subscription account or you know, the onboarding fees, which we are saying is 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 moderated off. So, and and again, uh, our 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 growth plans in terms of new subscription is also equally very aggressive. You know, as I said, we've grown 80% on a year-on-year -year basis. So what we were trying to say out here is, despite a lower or relatively uh, marginal drop in terms of the new accounts which is opened on subscription stock onboarded fees. Our renewal income, the way we are going, has or the annuity income has, more, uh, has completely compensated that off. But I think from a directional and a guidance perspective, 
new accounts opening momentum we are we are putting a lot of efforts and 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 innovative manners in which we can you know continue our uh, aggressive or uh, super aggressive customer acquisition spree right okay sure thank you so i just have a couple of follow up questions actually on the, on the basis of your answer so uh, has the sop cost been entirely say, kind of maybe considered in this quarter the employee expenses or is it going to be amortized uh, over the all the all the four quarters so it has been on, on an overall basis uh, the sop cost as i said the earlier it will be on a on a on a overall uh, uh, four quarter basis is what we are looking at okay sure thank you yeah uh, and uh, i think uh, uh when it uh, you spoke about the cyclicality element i think uh, would it be fair to say that okay the cyclicality element would also be present in the account openings as well and maybe as we proceed throughout the year the account opening goes up due to the cyclicality element yes absolutely you are right uh, we should expect in fact uh, if i if i say between april may june uh, uh, we saw that uh, april numbers were lower but it kind of uh, started to recover from may and june so we should see a higher yeah. number in this quarter and onwards okay thank you and uh, say kind of uh, just maybe i'll just squeeze in couple of more questions uh, say uh, i think you also spoke about uh, say kind of uh, the digital expenses actually and uh, your press release again where in say kind of uh, there are some digital uh, spend uh, investments that have been done otherwise the pat would have been higher by 30% so again kind of uh, uh, should i expect this to be something that okay which would continue for remainder of the quarters this incremental digital spends or again is this kind of a non recurring uh, kind of thing for now no i think uh, uh, as, as i said earlier uh, we are going to invest and digital spends will essentially continue as well so it is not non recurring kind of a thing you know it is it is a it is a recurring spend which we are essentially looking at it also depends upon uh, as i earlier mentioned it of the kind of platforms and how are we splitting it between the opex and capex currently uh, the large part of it is essentially coming on account of the 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 team and the, on the technology and the digital side which we are putting across okay thanks and uh, say kind of uh, on the merchant side actually so what percentage of merchants are active right now and uh, what initiatives do we take to say kind of maybe activate non uh, active merchants and uh, uh, how much time does it take for the newly onboarded merchants to maybe start contributing meaningfully and uh, i think the last one is on the pace print uh, acquisition as well say kind of uh, maybe uh, how is that going actually uh, what's uh, in terms of uh, uh, have you already started benefiting from them have we started integrating uh, their apis into our fino 2.0 application and maybe going ahead what are the plans so on the first question uh, on the merchant side we roughly see about 50 to 60% merchants who are active on a on a monthly basis so and uh, the numbers keep on varying uh, the same merchant may be active this month may not be active next month but on average roughly about 50 to 60% of the merchants are active multiple things we do one is that we have a field force uh, which is there on the ground which engages with the merchants and the distributors we we have uh, our own platforms on uh, chatbot where we can engage with them we also have a ivr calling system we have a big call center both inbound and outbound which is there where we engage with the customer on a regular basis our merchants on a regular basis and we have a big analytics team which keeps on uh, giving us data in terms of who is there. who should we expect will iterate in this month who whose volumes will come down come up so there is a lot of engagements both the digitally and physically uh, with the merchant uh, on a regular uh, basis that's why you would see that the volumes are growing and the merchant uh, merchant's uh, expansion is also growing because of the physical as well as the digital nature of our engagement uh, with them as far as uh, the second question uh, yeah please let me go first on the on the on the strategic uh, investment of pace print you know uh, that that uh, is is not a short term phenomena uh, we have our long term vision in terms of you know increasing our network and increasing our footfall and thereby you know having having the higher customer acquisition so this is you know just the first quarter out there so you know we are looking at a more strategic kind of partnership and the benefits of that will start uh, you know accreting to us maybe from um, you know quarter 3 ending or quarter 4 okay so sure, yeah thanks very much yeah thank you all the best thank you very much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of shreya shivani from clsa please go ahead 
thank you for taking my question again just a last uh, technical bit this uh, new new products uh, uh, even the inter international remittances the income will flow into the other line item right uh, from second half of fy23 or in fy24 because abhi till now it, that line only includes interest income and maybe some other charges is that correct yes there will be a separate line item wherein it will it will start coming through you know once it becomes a material kind of a thing yeah okay so effectively from second half of fy23 we should expect some some uh, revenue in that line right if you're launching the product in uh, next two quarters yes so digital think, insurance uh, and remittances international remittances Yes, that's how it will be uh, once it picks up the momentum. As Rishi said, with with the lead period, we've already done it on the branch. Uh, this quarter, we will do it in in terms of merchant, and and maybe you know on quarter three ending or quarter four, this can be you know having an uh, you know a reasonable impact on the bottom line coming through in terms of uh, the new product which comes. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shreya. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now have the conference over to the management for your closing comments. Thank you, uh, thank you everyone for participating. It's been a, a very rewarding quarter for us. Uh, if you see from the bottom, uh, from the top line point of view, uh, sequentially uh, we have grown on an annual basis. Also, we grew by 40 percent. We expect uh, profits uh, to continue to grow from here. Uh, uh, quarter one uh, normally is a lower profit quarter for us uh, every year. uh we should expect uh, profit growth as well as top line growth uh, from uh, the quarter to onwards on such the market is big uh, our casa cms and some of the products have started to show a lot of traction our ownership story and the implementation of that has been very very good uh, we expect as more and more customers will on get on board with the fino platform we'll be over a period of time uh, not only increase our stickiness and activeness with the merchant but but uh, and the customer but will also result in a higher cross sell and a dig higher digital uh, influence uh, with the customer over a period of time and uh, uh, thank you everyone with this uh, that's it yeah so thank you thank you everyone thank you Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.